what are you going to do? And the boys and the kids and, oh, my God, are you okay? And I remember being like, I'm, I'm great. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm scared, but I'm about to embark on something. I don't even know what it is. I just know... For the first time in a long time, I felt alive, as scared as I was. Mm. Hey, everybody, it's Charlie Epstein, and welcome to Business in Booths at the wonderful Center Square Grill in booming downtown East Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Everybody, it's Charlie Epstein here at Business in Booths in beautiful downtown East Longmeadow. Hats off to Bill Collins, the proprietor of Center Square Grill. Where is where is where we is right now? Where is we are right now? It's Christmas and I'm already drinking. It's not quite. I'm so excited. Not at 10 a.m. So excited. It is taking us forever to get this fine, young, dynamic woman to join me in my booth, Gina. De Stefano. I know that, but I like it when you say it. Do you or did you forget and you just know what you're doing? I know what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> of what's the name of your company? Oh my God, really? De Stefano yes. Group. We have everybody say what it is. Okay, De Stefano Group. Yeah, because it's the one and only. It's all about it's all about you. So let's start from the beginning. Okay, go. Where were you born? West Springfield, Massachusetts. So you're a Western Mass girl, which is where we are. I am, but I wasn't yeah. here the whole time. So I went to school in New York, then I lived in D.C., Wait then I lived is in that Boston. The city. See. I know, and no, I did not go to school in the city. I went in upstate, went uh, to Union in Schenectady. Oh yeah. So that's why when you say I'm a New York. Grad. That's right. Yeah. We're close. We were. Yep. Then I lived in DC, then I lived in Boston, and then my father passed about 15 years ago, which brought me back to West Springfield. So what did your father do? He was an entrepreneur. Yeah. He owned a liquor store for many years. He owned a restaurant. He still owns, well, my family still owns Captain Nemo's at the Big E. And then he no. retired early and played the stock market and played it right. And Ooh. that was that. And mom? Mom was highly educated. She was Passed. a different, she's a PhD, in... it, but she didn't get it till her fifth. So my parents are total polar opposites. My father was no college degree, bl entrepreneurial blood, total. which I took. And my dad, my mother, very, very Ray smart Crock, woman. No college degree, entrepreneur, right? Yeah. We'll get into the well, restaurant I, business in a minute. See the setup. My mother, a lot of letters behind her name. She was very by the book of life. Like you go to school, you get BA, the MBA, MBA, PhD. She what, what's is her PhD a in? BA, master's, uh, education. She got her PhD in education. Oh, cool. So then my brothers kind of followed that too because they're MBAs. My middle brother is a JD MBA. I'm the least educated of the family. No, oh, you're the Because I'm the entrepreneur. Exactly. I took Youngest? a different path. Youngest. Ooh. Of three? Of three. Youngest of three, entrepreneur. Most successful, right, Mac? Brother, huh? brother and sister, PhDs, a lot in common. Yeah. Now, are your parents second generation, first generation? Second. So where'd everybody come over from? My father, Italy, 100% Italian. My mother, 100% Polish. Again, talk about a great combination. quite a match made in heaven. Wow. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. So who would you say influenced you the most, dad or mom? Both. Also. And I haven't recognized that until I got older. Yeah. Because I liked to blame a lot as a child. And then I got older and I was like, wow, thank you so much for everything you did right and wrong. So you were one of those kids that grew up feeling like life is not working for me and I need to blame people? What was that? Oh, oh no, Dr. Phil. <laughs> I was not a born victim. It was just... You just said you like to blame people. Yeah, but I didn't realize that if it didn't happen the way it did, I wouldn't be exactly where I am in total gratitude. Yeah. So I'm grateful for my mother taking the path of more of that traditional 1950s type woman that I didn't want to be. But she also taught me so many other things that make me an incredible mother, you know, uh, empathetic, just just so much good I got from her. My father, again, opposite. He was a very boisterous personality, big presence, big. risk taker, yeah. gambler, the whole nine. Mm. I'm not a gambler. No addiction. you're a risk taker because you're an entrepreneur. Total risk taker. Yeah. And that's the thing. My mother always used to say, you're so hasty. You're so impulsive, which I used to think of those as bad things because she kind of said it in the negative. 
and my dad was always one that had these like huge visions. But the best of both worlds to look at is I got my mom where there is, you need some structure and strategy. And I have my dad, which is just balls to the wall, go do go it. Go to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what'd you study in college at Union? Psychology, mm. which my father didn't like because sure. he wanted me to be an economics major. He always used to say, um, and I took this to today, you know, study something or learn something you can sell. It was always about selling. So I kind of knew, even being young and dumb at 19, that, well, psychology is the study of human behavior. How can you not apply that to everything and everyone? Which I did, created a business around it. So there you go, dad, so happy? You, <laughs> so you graduate with a psychology degree, but you don't become a psychologist. No, I graduated with a degree. Um, so my father paid about $150,000 for that fancy piece of paper. My first salary out of union was $23,000 a year. I was living on my brother's couch in DC off his American Express because he was the lawyer again. I still don't think I have my mom convinced that I got this because <laughs> of my start and I just did things very differently. So I was making 23,000 a year in banking, knew that that was not the path for me. And then I stumbled into recruiting in DC, which was the thing for me. Mm. Then from there I joined a very large corporation where I did HR, people development and everything in my life just made sense. And I just learned to capitalize off opportunities and passion and dreams. And that's where I was always different. So just, who'd you work for when you were a head, headhunter? No? Higher strategy. And then when DC. you went to? Then I was with Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Corporate, yeah. So how'd you, how'd you get to work with Taco Bell? Tell us about that. Okay. This is, you know those moments in life that just stick out in your head as if you remember the distinct conversation with the universe? So I, we were in transition. It was, I was living in DC with my then husband, whole other segment, and my father had passed and I knew I had to get back. And I, you know, there was a lot of pressure to get back up here and be around family. And so I had put my resume out everywhere and Taco Bell got a hold of it and was calling me. And I was like, eh, Taco Bell, I don't even remember applying. What is, again, so young, just so young and dumb. You're like how old at that point? 25. Okay. Married. Married. Kids. No kids yet. This okay. was in DC. So yeah. it was also a uh, work from home position. I was like, oh no, no, I need to be in an office every day. That was the biggest thing. I was like, I don't want to do this. Little did I know that the universe already had a plan for me. And that was the best thing. Cause that I was with them for almost 10 years. I got to be best of both worlds. The mom that was there able to do anything. And I so, couldn't have imagined. So when you it say work from home, Tell me about us. I, I had a home office. So the. It, but what was the work that you were doing for him? I was doing recruiting, people development. For Taco Bell. For Taco Bell. And I had markets across the country. So at, towards the. I got hired just to cover Connecticut, 35 stores. I had 287 when I left. And I had Michigan, metropolitan area, Long Island. See another part of New York that isn't the city. Uh, whew, let's say Ohio. But, 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 uh, but All these let me step back. You're 25 years old. You've done kind of recruiting, still kind of young, and Taco Bell comes calling. How does that happen? I don't know. Ask the powers that be. Well, and it, they, they the fought power for that, me. I look back now. I'm, look, and I'm looking at the power that be. They were fighting, and I just was like, no. And I also, at the time, too, being young, I and my father had passed. And if my dad was alive, I can only imagine. He would have been like, get your head out of here. Taco Bell's calling, and they're a multi-billion dollar international company. And what are you thinking? Da, 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 da. But he wasn't. So maybe he was working from the other side. Maybe that was the power that be. Because it took a lot to convince me to join them. Because I did not like the idea of working from home. Right. And then I had several interviews. And I said, yes, best decision of my life. And you, and you were there for 10 years. I was said. there for just about 10 years. And yeah. so when I was there, and I, this is another dear diary moment, my supervisor, my direct supervisor, Phyllis Jones, who basically taught me everything I know, who now works for me, she came out of retirement. And uh, so when I was working there for any large corporation, this isn't Taco Bell specific, but as you know, Towards the end of the year, every year, they got to do some cuts. So between October and December of every year, everyone just pooped themselves. And it was, what HR was mean, cut. poop themselves? I'm just trying to be nice. Do you beep stuff out? Can I swear on this? Yes. I can. Okay, so they sh pants every year. Meaning October, you're, you're just scared. You're going to get fired. You're going to get laid off. Everybody in the company. Everybody in the company. Right. 
between October. Not and the people serving the tacos, the people at the corporation. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. The operators were pretty safe, but even, you know, right. the higher ups yeah. operators because they, they skim and cut. Right. And so every year was operations, HR, they were cutting. And I was smart enough at that point to know writing is on the wall. It has nothing to do with me, but my time is coming and I could either take the road where this I want to grow. This every year or at the this end of 10 is years? Pretty much every year. Okay. And it's you just every year, every company. So it was happening and my supervisor was great. She disclosed as much as she could, but she definitely planted a seed where be proactive. And I always have been. So I didn't know what I was going to do. That's when I toyed around going back to school and getting my PhD in clinical. And I was like, I would lose my license in a week. I got a mouth. I like to share. It just wouldn't work. And I had no idea what I was going to do. I was making really good money. I was working from home. I was like, I got to I got to figure something out here. And Taco Bell was always huge on coaching. It was always coaching, coaching, people development. I mean, they got the best of the best there, which I was a sponge to for 10 years, just soaking it all in and you know, decided. It's, it's, it's interesting. I'm sorry, but it's like, I don't think of Taco Bell like the culture that you're saying. So tell us more. You know, maybe it's me on the outside because I don't eat at Taco Bell. So what do you mean like by culture? I, I don't know, maybe some are like a fast food store. For some reason, I don't think of it as having this great culture of developing people because they're serving tacos. So tell me more. I'm interested. What 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 makes the company so great? This is great that they have incredible belief in people and they really do. And this is a stigma too. like people yeah, so you have laugh the stigma. at fast food. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Well, maybe not for you, but for the majority of people, your operators, your managers of a Taco Bell are making a lot of money. They're invested in a the company. They get stock options. And these are people that never went to college, barely have a high school. And if they are smart, which a lot of them are, and they get on this path and they become a manager, then an area coach, then a region. And I think the current CEO started as an assistant manager, worked his way up. And that is a lot of the stories there. They have belief in people. They believe in talent over tenure. How many stores does Taco Bell have? Uh, corporate now. Oh, don't quote me. Oh, because they're franchises too, right? So my story gets even better again with how much I love Taco Bell and these yeah. people. So yeah. I learned so much. And it's funny because I just, you know, when you just have a feeling, you just know. So it was December 2014, five years ago. Okay. And I kind of knew I just had this feeling, but it was past it. And everyone was like, no, we're safe. We're safe this year. Because that's when you get like through the grapevine, everyone's safe. And so all of my peers were like, would you just calm down? I just knew. And there were other things that had happened prior to that, that I was just getting that internal message. Like, it's time, Gina, it's time. And it was. It was December 2014. Time that you left or they left you? They left me. But like I had told you, I'd seen the writing on the wall. So about two years prior to that, I had started consulting very small scale, just I knew it was coming, didn't know when. So when it did come, I had built up enough of a small clientele coupled with my severance because I said all I wanted to hear when they called me was it's not performance related and you get a severance. And I heard those two things. Sweet. And as although I was scared, I between the severance and the thing, I had just enough to get by. Like I had six, about six months mm. to make it or break it because that severance was only to last me right. six months. I was the breadwinner. Still my married? ex was not. I was still married. Because you just said your ex. Ex now. I was still married. Still married. Kids at this two, point? Two kids. Yeah. Two kids. Okay. So In D.C. or here? I was here. Okay. So you moved back here. Yep. And so I, yeah, I had system. been here. Yeah. Not really, though. Okay. I was pretty much, because, uh, again, this was foreign. So I knew who I was. Again, this comes back to the entrepreneur where you're still scared, but you do it anyway. Mm. And, of course, when everyone found out that I was laid off, it was, oh, what are you going to do? And the boys and the kids and, oh, my God, are you okay? And I remember being like, I'm, I'm great. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm scared, but I'm about to embark on something. I don't even know what it is. I just know for the first time in a long time, I felt alive, as scared as I was. Mm. So, But isn't that what scared is? Yeah. Absolutely. How many people avoid? I mean, let's talk. About, I mean, how many people? How many people are like? You know, I just don't want to rock the. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't. Right. And then they're missing life, which is to actually feel fear, threatened. Oh my God. Obstacles, frustration, anger. Right. All so I got. I got to talk to that point, and we'll hopefully edit this so it makes sense, and our ADD is not flying everywhere. But this I just this ADD. morning. Do I have ADD. Textbook. Want a burger? Textbook. Want a burger? Text squirrel. Eat a burger? 
Just this morning, I'm listening to a podcast because that's what I do every morning. That's part of my routine too. I listen to a TED Talk podcast, something. And a guy said just that. He said, listen, everyone says life is hard. Life is actually very easy. People get in their comfortable mode. They do exactly as they're supposed to. They get themselves a spouse and they have some kids. It's pretty easy. Now, 100 years ago, our thing was survival. But now, no one is like, listen. A million years ago, you were a cave person in a cave. You woke up and went, what do I do now? How do I survive today? Today, so, you go to Super Stop and Shop, thank you. Whole Foods, and you have get all the food that you want. Where if I were to lose everything tomorrow, I'm still not going to be on the street. I have right. a great family. I have great right. friends. I would build myself back. Right. So that's what he said. Life is actually easy. Living is hard. Living and chasing your dreams and getting up excited and pushing through to live outside that's of societal the fun norms. Part. No, but I'm talking that's to another entrepreneur. Part. That's what I think. You know how many we're gonna have to bleep out of this. I know. You know what's funny? Just beep it. Don't like. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I have a potty mouth, so I'm sorry. So I thought of that it's true. I mean, I go to bed so excited to wake up the next day, and sometimes so terrified. But the two go hand in hand. So when I started in business, 21, right out of college, didn't know anybody. My mentor handed me a phone and said, there's two million people out there. Start dialing. He said, but this is what you do. Before you pick up the phone, you smile and you say to yourself, who's going to be lucky enough to talk to me today? <laughs> I love it. And the other thing that he said to me is, just remember, every day you're unemployed. So 40 years later, people think, oh, you're so successful and, you know, there's nothing to worry about. I still wake up every day. And my wife works for me. She'll tell you this. And I turn and I go, we're unemployed today. Let's see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So when you have that kind of mentality that every day you're unemployed and you get to make something happen, that's the difference between an entrepreneur and somebody who punches the clock and doesn't want to open the door 10 minutes early to serve you, as we were just talking about a few yeah. minutes ago when I was trying to buy a shirt and the guy wouldn't open the door. And you know, it's funny, so you say that, I'm unemployed every day. I say always be unimpressed with yourself. I'm always unimpressed because yeah. that means I always have to get better and better and better. Right. And my dad used to say, and now I know what he meant, and I always knew what he meant, but I had therapists that contradicted that and they were wrong. My dad always used to say, never get too big for your britches. No. And Huber so- Hubris. Yeah. Humble. So the, yeah, Humble. thank you. That's the way Humble. I took it. Like never forget where you came from. Cause he too, my parents came from nothing. My dad built everything. My mother educated herself to the nines because right. they came from nothing. Right. And that was my dad's mentality. Contrary to popular belief, everybody does not get a trophy. I sure as hell didn't. Right. And that's no also going back to my parents, the same thing. So, oh, the blame with my mom. Because that was her mentality too. You don't get the trophy. Work harder, do better. Yeah. Well, that was just hammered in my head and my brothers, the accountability. We were held accountable. My dad owned a liquor store at seven years old. I was cleaning Serving up liquor. outside. Not quite, <laughs> but I was working. I was dusting the bottle. You want a brown paper bag with that, sir? <laughs> Because I got one in the back room. <laughs> I was the bag runner. I could do that. I could get, but I was, I was dusting bottles at seven years old. I was doing landscaping work at seven years old. All right. So let's talk about this thing that you're just talking about. So tell me what is the greatest mistake you've ever made in life? Could be business person. Hmm. I don't believe in mistakes. I believe in learning opportunities, but uh, if I, I were to talk, on, okay, I, but no, because Biggest mistake, I wish that at a young age, I knew to shut my mouth and open my ears. If I could give advice to my younger self, shut up and listen. Okay. Shut up and listen. Because right. now I get that. Shut right. up and listen. Best decision you've ever made. Start my own business. Great. So let's Start talk about that. Company. So you get fired by Taco Bell. Laid off. They were laid With off. severance. Mm -hmm. well, you are a sensitive woman, aren't you? No. We'll get to that in a minute. I, I click. So... <clears throat> you get laid off with severance. You've already got a few clients because you know it's coming. Mm -hmm. And you open your doors to Stefano Group? No, I opened his GDF coaching. Okay. I was a one-woman show for a while. So you're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching? I was doing with... much smaller scale, one-on-one. -on -one. So, okay, the beauty, back to the story. We can all tie this in now. So December 2014, mm -hmm. I get laid off. I'm scared. I'm excited. Again, another reason why this man is my ex, because the next day, because I, I think that I was only bringing in like $19,000 a year doing this really on the side. Obviously, that's a huge cut from what I was making. And he was like, listen, if in a, a year from now, 
You're only bringing in 19 grand. Maybe we got, we got to talk about this. This is the day after I get, can you just give me a moment to collect myself? But it was stuff like that. Whenever that is said to me, just fuels me even more. Like wait, wait a year, just wait. And so fast forward a year. Now I had been talking to people at Taco Bell and they found out I was consulting and they said, oh, you should consult for Taco Bell. And I was like, no, that part of my life is over. And it's a good thing that I revisited it and took the calls Yeah. because they were coming in and I started consulting for Taco Bells. So a year later, it's, it's, uh, 2016. 16. So I blur, I just blur, blur a lot of this out. So yeah. my now ex came to the kitchen one day and basically just ended it. I haven't been in love with you. It was a very hard time, very traumatic time. I thought my life was over. It was the yeah, most traumatic thing I've ever lived through. I was a lifetime original movie. <laughs> So here I am left with these two little boys, a house, a dog, the whole thing. And it was at that time that I started to really get big contracts with Taco Bell. It was almost like that blessing where I was given work that I could do in my sleep well yeah. because I had no energy to go out there and network. And you know what it takes to go out there and build relationships. And if you are so broken, you can't get right. out of bed. But you already had relationships because you didn't burn a bridge, which mm -hmm. is another lesson. Burn no bridges. Don't burn any bridges. So that was highly yeah. respected at Taco Bell. Yeah. That carried over. That got me through that rough patch. And so, then... So just so we're clear, the kind of work that you were doing for Taco at that time was, was what kind of work? Basically recruiting. Okay. That's why it was, it was on a simpler level. Got it. So now, gosh, we're four years later. And in those four years, I've grown so much where now I do my true passion, which is people development, executive coaching, leadership coaching. I've developed um, systems that have been trademarked mm -hmm. and now I'm leveling right. up. So you're creating your own intellectual capital, mm -hmm. which is really cool. That's amazing stuff. So I have to ask this, right? Cause you're a female entrepreneur and there's always this stigma about it's so hard to be a female in corporate America. Mm -hmm. Is it? I like this question because I've, I've thought a lot about this. Yeah. Yes so and no. It is true. It's not, if you want to make this a conversation about men versus women or this, and, oh, and now is the platform to it. I got to where I am basically from mostly men. I mean, the two most influential people in my life was were female supervisors. So the females taught me all the smart stuff I know, but the men definitely pushed me along. Like yeah. They were the cheerleaders. Right. We can go into a whole meme or a conversation where it is mostly more women against women that are pushing us down, not men. So I have never. This is pretty what I think is what's happening. Because the, the women big lie, the big lie in America is women put women down more than men do. This yeah. is my belief system. You can tell me if you know your experience is different and that it's the men that actually provide the opportunities for men and women to succeed or not. Yeah, but the women that are competent that get over that, oh, because I've got my girl tribe and they are hardcore. All that we're doing is building each other up, yeah. which is why my firm, they're only women. And not because I discriminate against men, but these women have been in my tribe and my circle. I've known them for years and they're right. go-getters and they don't look at it like that. But I don't think the themes are any different. If I look at somebody like Susan Blakely who created Spandex, right? I'm just mm -hmm. gonna pick her because she's a billionaire, super successful. Started with nothing. 5,000. She had every Started with penny nothing. in a basement scramble together. I know Bingo. her story. Yep. Okay. But I don't care if it's female or male. There's a million of those stories, whether it's female or male. At the end of the day, what does it take to be successful as an entrepreneur? You're right. No. So you're asking me? Yeah. What does it take to be successful it's as an, an entrepreneur? It's an internal conversation you have to have with yourself all the time. And right. I can't even tell you how many thousands and thousands of dollars I have spent on my personal, intellectual, spiritual growth. So I have the balls to sit down in front of anyone and not take your I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. If you're disrespectful, if you're not listening to me, I will be heard. But there's Men a flip and women but there's a flip struggle side with to that. that too, which is that you don't have to take anybody's that you can be humble, gracious, considerate, a good listener, mm -hmm. learn, take all that in and decide for yourself yeah. what choices I, and decisions that's to make. The thing. You're absolutely right. When right. you go after people with kindness and empathy first, you get so far. I don't ever have to rarely, I, I can't even less right. than on one hand of any times I've had to like get aggressive. I call it being politely aggressive, Sure. but 
when you go to people with kindness and empathy and you view them as you are just like me and you have honest, transparent conversations, that is what has grown my, my business over the last 15 Beautiful. years. Beautiful. So what's, what do you see out on the horizon now? So if you look out over the next three years, what's the big opportunities for you in business? World domination. Okay. I, uh, I call that global domination, but that's okay. Whatever. Yeah. Potato, potato. Uh, because you've Once said you're again, growing, I you're hiring growing people, you're expanding. But what's got you excited? What's trending in your industry? What do you see as the next kind oh of God. big things? <sighs> really? Yeah. Go getting into companies and, and teaching basic kindness and empathy. Right. That, so the system that I developed and trademarked, the SUU system, stands for special, understood, and excited. And I know we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. But if you can make somebody feel special, understood, and excited, they are putty in your hands. They want to work for you. They want to do business with you. They want to date you. So do you and it's much more. So let's talk about expanding. So if you take the system that you've developed, do you see yourself training other coaches under you that yes. you can expand what you're doing? So you can go beyond Taco Bell to Chick-fil-A or McDonald's or any of those kind of services yes. or Center Square Grill. Exactly. Yeah. Because cool. there's only one of me. And that's the thing that gets scary when you talk about growth. It's. Yeah, it's still scary. I'm like, wow, now I have four coaches under me. Yep. And I, you know, have to train on certain things because there's only one of me and people, but I want to have the company or the firm where I am me. There's yeah. I can't clone me, but everyone is equal and they are just as good. And I have no question when I send them out to clients that they're going to deliver top notch service. So yeah, I'm but, very all, selective. but they also need to bring themselves to the work. Absolutely. That's, that's why what makes it I don't want this yeah. is the thing that I go against when I want to grow, but I want to grow organically to each play on people's strengths. Is I don't want to put you through the Gina DiStefano coaching course trying to be a cookie cutter of me. I want you to take your authentic way of getting course? through. To people it's the sue course and suing yes right suing interesting double entendo what's your favorite word my favorite word oh that's a good question let me think it's probably f okay what's your least favorite word <laughs> oh supple 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 what does supple mean i don't know it sounds like nipple it sounds like oh, moist i don't okay. like any of those words what turns you on Oh, business, growth, big clients. What turns you off? Oh, God, people that just have no empathy or kindness. Okay. Favorite curse word? F. Okay. What occupation other than yours would you absolutely love to do? Definitely something still in service. Maybe working with underprivileged children, like doing something along those lines, helping the homeless vets, just the people that have voices but haven't been empowered to use them. I just okay. want to empower people. What occupation other than yours would you absolutely hate to do? Mm. Accounting, teaching. Mm, money. <laughs> if heaven existed mm -hmm. and you're walking through the pearly gates, what do you want to hear God say to you? Good job, kid. Yeah. Good job, home. kid. Welcome home. Mm, nice. And what's your favorite song? And so it goes, Billy Joel. Ooh. So I got a jukebox here. You can put the quarter in. Where is it going here? Yeah, right in there. And we're gonna sing. And so it goes, and so it goes. And you're the only oh. one who knows. Every time I hear that song, it reminds me of my father and he passed and all the things that I know now that I didn't, that song triggers that in me. So every time I hear it, I think of my father. So that's funny like to know that he's It's a good way to go out. Daughter. It really is. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Charlie Epstein. We're at Business and Booths here at Center Square Grill. And if you need great coaching and you want to learn the SUE process, which stands for special. Understood. Understood. And excited. And excited. Then you want to check out the DeStefano Group in, where are you located? We're based in West Springfield. West Springfield. But we are across the country. Across the country. We travel. Peace out and happy holidays. And so it goes. And so it goes. And so it goes, and so it goes, and you're the only one.